Oh, am I on? After last week, the competition with Megan Birch, I've got to step up my game. You do. I yeah. do. We talked about this. I have a meeting with her after this, so I'm going to... Oh, do you really? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going we're gonna... to... We should you should have, like, Battle of the Bands or something. <laughs> so, battle, now, Megan, battle Megan of the marketing gets into directors. it. Actually, Megan, Megan will be coming up on... Uh, um, yeah, actually, she's due in on uh, Thursday, I believe. Well, she's a riot. She's got a ton of energy. She's, I think, she's really good for Mount Centipede. Oh yeah, no, yeah. she is. No, she's done. A, she's done a great job. Mm-hmm. In fact, we had Bruce McCloy in last uh, last you week. Did how yeah. is my friend Bruce doing? Bruce is doing really, really well. What and, was he here uh, talking about? Say, I, you know what? I um, I'm embarrassed to say and I don't remember. Retirement, right old age. No, no, <laughs> no, he had an event coming up. I uh, it's it's escaping my memory right now. Mm-hmm. But um, what was it? No, that wasn't the Proudy. No, I don't. I don't remember. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it was good to see him. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, and so uh, he's he's keeping busy. Good. All right. So what's uh? What do you what do you want to sabotage? <laughs> I figured we'd continue from last week's segment. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not talking about that today. That? No, no, no. Huh? Oh, <laughs> no, it's, but uh, we, we, we will it's, revisit it's that. It's hot point. saxophone music is what that's called. Uh-huh. Saxophone. <laughs> Perfect for a day like today. It is. It's going to be hot tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Talking about hot. Got a I heat know. wave coming in. Bring it. So one thing I wanted to ask you about, though, seriously, um, you know, one of the things that you always hear about is concern for um, elderly mm-hmm. and checking in with people when you have those really hot days. Mm-hmm. Um, just some tips and some advice on helping to uh, to keep the elderly population healthy sure. and vibrant during those uh, those periods where it does get really hot. Because some people don't have the air conditioning. Right. Well, one um, thing to do and it can be dangerous is to definitely stay hydrated. Um, a lot of elderly people don't really feel the need for you know water or hydration like younger people do. So make sure that they are drinking enough. Um, properly hydrating fluids um not wine that's not gonna work <laughs> <laughs> i was actually thinking martinis but okay well, that's not you know. gonna work either it's gonna no. totally defeat the purpose but um gatorades waters things of that nature um and also you know a simple thing such as layering clothing mm-hmm. um so um so that you can take things off as you get warmer throughout the day um stay out of the sun Clearly, I mean, yeah. especially your midday sun from 10 until 2, that's going to knock somebody right on their butt and nobody needs that. Yeah. Um, a few other things, you know, yeah, not everybody has air conditioning. Keep keep your windows open, I guess. Or, you know, if you're, if, well, actually, I, you know, my house actually stays pretty cool because we have a lot of shade. So depending on where you are, is you really want to tailor y- your 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 home and uh, to, to your I guess see what your sun and your shade. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, for, you know, for some people that maybe live on a second floor or something mm-hmm. like that, where, you know, the heat tends to rise. And the other thing too, is you hear people talk a lot about, well, if it's really, really hot, then shopping malls become popular, Senior movie theaters centers. become, but, but you know, I mean, in this area, you've got to, you've got to drive. I mean, if you're living in Sunapee, if you're living in, in mm-hmm. Newport, you've got a little bit of a drive to get to one of those locations, either Lebanon or you've got to go to Concord. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for people that have, uh, may not be as mobile, uh, or maybe they don't have a vehicle that depends on other people people for transportation that becomes i think you should go to like the convenience store and stand in the beer cooler yeah a lot of them have the beer cave there you go (laughs) that's not such a bad idea well you can kill two birds with one stone there you can go to the beer cave you can get cool and you can hydrate (laughs) yes you you can crack open a couple of jenny cream ales and there you go Uh, you know that's hilarious that you say that my dad he quit drinking a few months ago um but that's what he drank all his life was jenny cream ale and i still when i go home there's a whole 12 pack in the fridge and i'm like oh my god i was i was in uh when i when i left the studio yesterday i went to market basket and um there was uh, a guy who was standing in line this is about 12 noon actually right around 12 noon and um, so uh, I'm standing in line and I've got my groceries and there's a guy standing behind me and he's got the one can of Genesee cream ale. And my first thought was, huh, liquid lunch. And my second thought was, they still make that stuff? Well, my th- my thought would be, you know, that's a really good way to keep yourself in check. Just buy one. Don't buy a six pack because if you buy one, you drink one and that's it. Yeah. You buy a six pack, you drink six. Well, that that's it, it. maybe you do. <laughs> I mean, I exercise a little 
you know. I don't drink beer, first of so, all, but there's the, oh, there's the possibility that that could have happened at one point in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not recent. Lee Stalker's <laughs> Days of Misspent Youth, ladies we and gentlemen. We can't go there. And we will dive here. into the stories. I'm sure they will be fascinating. They could, I'd be they could fired. Make a, they I'd, could I'd make get a, fired. a lifetime uh, made-for-TV movie with uh, the exploits of uh, Lee. So you had a, uh, a, a story that you wanted to share. Um, it, well, yeah. You know, last week we were talking about um, ways to, not on purpose, but ways people end up sabotaging their relationships with the person that they're caring for. Um, And and one of the things that we talked about mostly last week was the lack of privacy that Mm -hmm. happens if you are taking care of somebody, you're there a lot, or they move in, or you move in, whatever the case might be. So as if if people who are listening or uh, do or do not know, um, about three months ago, my dad was diagnosed with stage four um, colon cancer. So my sister and I have been you know, taking him to all of his chemo, all of his appointments, his surgeries, all, everything. And I, so, you know, I'm thinking we're doing great things, which we are, and he is super pleased, and he keeps telling his oncologist how lucky he is. But um, so that aside, I had an experience this weekend with the lack of privacy. I went home, and I took my dog with me for um, the first time taking my dog with me. And I got home Thursday night. Uh, by Saturday afternoon, my dad, I could tell my dad was so irritated with me. So I was like, eh, I think I'll take off for a little while. And I took my dog and I went and I hung out with a couple of my friends. So I'm at their house and um, my friend is texting with his stepsister, who was my dad's nurse after he got home from the hospital. And he is, as soon as, I, so basically what happened is as soon as I left, he got up and he left and he went to the grocery store to stock up and he runs into Amber and gives her a big hug. And, and she says, how are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm doing great. He goes, I just got Lee and the dog out of the house. He goes, boy, did I need to get rid of them? Wow. <laughs> He's like, I needed some time, you know, to myself. And it was, it was, I find that funny knowing my dad, it's not meant with any ill will or anything. Um, but I was just like, huh. Here I am, a, a you know, a, a, a product of my own <laughs> conversations. So, you know, but it, so it worked out well. To, so the important thing there is actually to be able to recognize when you're getting in somebody's space, mm-hmm. because that that's just going to cause undue stress for both people who are involved, and in, and sooner or later it's going to cause a big problem. So you know, make sure to be paying attention to what's going on. We get so wrapped up in wanting to make sure somebody's eating well and they're taking their medication and they're comfortable and all of this stuff that we might miss the little things, such as hmm, maybe I need to step back, you know. So, um, but overall, it was a great weekend. We had really good news from the oncologist. So I'm on cloud nine today. Good. It's a good day. Good. Mm-hmm. One of the things that, um, and, and you had sent me a couple of notes, and you, you typically do that. You send me some bullet points mm-hmm. um, and just some ideas to, to, to shape our segments. And one of the things that you had mentioned, which you didn't really go into in depth, and I was fascinated by the term lone soldier syndrome. And I, mm-hmm. I wanted to... Uh, to cover that that's one of the things that when we were talking about the sabotage aspects of caregiving that lone soldier syndrome can be uh a, a sabotaging effect and i wanted you to expand a little bit more on that because that that just that just the, the the term kind of struck me and then i'm like all right so i want to find out more about this well kind of what happens is once you start feeling responsible for the person you're caring for and you're taking on that full responsibility um, and you're you're moving forward without any regards to their emotional needs. So you're thinking you're the only person in this situation who matters. And truthfully, as human beings, we kind of are that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we t- we put ourselves before we put others. Although we do things for everybody else, when it comes down to it, it's all about w- what's working for me. So um, that so that's what happens is you you tend to um, uh, not regard to emotional needs of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what ends up happening is you end up not really being good to, um, to you know, to yourself, to the other people involved in the situation, such as other family members, and as well as the caregiver, because you get um, overwhelmed um, and you feel that you're the only one managing this and, you know, you get resentful. And so there's a lot of emotions that go into, you know, this type of circumstance. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm taking, I'm drinking it Thought in. you like, fell asleep for a minute. No, no, I'm not, no, because my eyes <laughs> are open. My eyes are open. No, I'm just, I'm drinking it in. You were over there catching I'm, flies. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I was listening intently. <laughs> well, some of the things that you can, um, you know, you can do to avoid that lone soldier, soldier syndrome is to um, stop thinking that asking for help is a sign of weakness. It's not. Um, but again, as I think it's partly human nature that we 
are so used to doing things on our own and not re expecting other people to do it or, um that you know we we tend to forget that there are other people there to help and you're not you're not the only one in this situation even if you are a only child there are other people that are part of your support system that can be accessed such as friends or you know siblings of your loved one um and neighbors things mm. of that nature so don't you know ask for help when you need it um another thing that you can do <clears throat> is um is take respite breaks and a lot of people just totally space out doing this um but that ba basically a respite is a, sh a short break so yeah. you know you can um at summer Crest, we offer a respite when we have availability um for people who you know are taking care of mom or dad and maybe you want to go on a vacation or maybe you just need some time in your own home. Um, you know, and mom and dad can come and stay at Summercrest for a short period of time. Um, oh, I didn't know that was an option. Yeah. Yeah, really? it is. Um, and it, it's always, always depends on what we have available. Mm -hmm. So um, it's always good to call and ask and you can call 863-8181 to find out more about that. Um, but it's a, it's not only respite for the caregiver, but it's also respite for the person being cared for because they need a break from you too. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking if I, if, I were, if I were taking care if I were taking care of my parents, I'm sure it would be like, Yeah, we really need a break from They'll you be sending you to rest <laughs> right now. My my parents would be like, Please just put me in a home. I need a break <laughs> from you and I've only been in here for ten minutes. Wow. Okay, well guess what? Your break is coming up because this segment is just about <laughs> done, Lee Stalker. I have a couple of things that I need to plug first. Okay. Um uh, so we have at Summer Crest uh, coming up soon on August 9th is our Tri-Chamber Business After Hours. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, so if anybody has any interest in Summer Crest and wants to see what we do and also may have some interest in um, any of the chambers, the Lake Centipede Region Chamber, the Newport Chamber or the Claremont Chamber, give me a call um, 863-8181 and I'll give you more information on that. Um, and additionally, the Newport Chamber has their annual Windmill 5K coming up on Saturday, August 12th. And that's an uh, evening run, and we're going to have food and a live band and fireworks, and it's going to be a good time. It's up that's on the cool. um, Onella property out in Lempster. Nice. And I should give a shout out to my best friend, Kevin. He sent me this awesome text message over the weekend. <laughs> I'll read it to you off air. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to say thank you, Kevin. You made my day. All right. Lee Stalker, always a pleasure having you in Thank studio. You. Lee Stalker from Summercrest. You can email Lee, lstalker at summercrest.net. Visit the website at www.summercrest.net. And you can certainly swing by 169 Summer Street in Newport and check out their facility or give them a call at 603-863-8181. Again, 863-8181. Lee Stalker from Summercrest. Have yourself a great day. Thank you. Say hi Me to too. Steve for us. I will. All right. Be well. 750, you are listening to First Look on WNTK and WU.